My name is Marissa Papa Constantino, and I will be walking you through step by step on how to solve a polynomial equation. The purpose of the video A lot of students at BCSS miss math class due to their participation in sports. I, for one, am someone who misses quite a bit of school for my sport. Typically, they have no problem getting them as paperwork or solutions but they need a step-by-step -step explanation on how to do each problem. Here's where to start. What is a polynomial equation? Well, it's an expression consisting of variables and coefficients that involve only the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and non-negative integer exponents. To the right, you'll see a graph of a polynomial equation graph. Now to my question. I'll read it once through from start to finish. During a normal 5 second respiratory cycle in which a person inhales and exhales, the volume of air in a person's lungs can be modeled by the following. Where the volume V is measured in liters at T seconds. A. What restrictions must be placed on T? B. If asked how many seconds have passed in the volume of air in a person's lungs is 0.25 liters, would you answer the question algebraically or by using graphic technology? Justify your decision. And C. Solve the problem in Part B. The main grade 12 concept that's being applied into this question is synthetic division. Synthetic division is a shortcut method of a polynomial division in the special case of dividing by a linear factor. To the right is an example of synthetic division. The one in the box on the outside is a factor of the equation. In the first row, numbers 3, 8, negative 9, and 2 are the numbers of the equation in the following that cannot be factored and thus why synthetic division must be applied here. The first step is to take the number 3 from the first row and bring it down based on the red arrow shown. Then multiply by the number on the outside which is number 1. Once done, take the 3 that is now multiplied from 1 and bring it up according to the blue arrow to the row, the second row. Then, from the second row, you will be adding 8 plus 3. Once that number is given, you will bring that back down, based on the red arrow shown. These three simple steps will be repeated all the way until the end, until the final number is equal to 0 and there is no remainder left. To the right is a graph of the function from the question. The function has odd symmetry because even functions can be flipped horizontally whereas this graph cannot and will ha not have the same function on both sides. The end behaviors as x approaches negative infinity, y will approach negative infinity, and as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity as well. The x values on the right side will go up, as opposed to the opposite on the left side, they will go down. The degree is 3, as this is the highest exponent in the equation given, and how we know that this function is a cubic function. Moving on to the question to answer part A, what restrictions must be placed on t? Well, what are restrictions? In mathematics, the restriction of a function, f and x, is a new function, obtained by choosing a smaller domain of the original function. The notation is also used. As given in the question, the person inhales and exhales the cycle of 0 to 5 seconds. This gives us a hint to where our first restriction will be placed. To the right are examples of restrictions. Essentially, restrictions are numbers in equations that do not make sense in the equation and are possibly numbers that could not relate to the context of the question and are not possible. The first restriction that can be placed on t is simple. There cannot be negative amount of time. Therefore, there cannot be a negative number for time at t. Also, the second restriction that would be placed on t is that it cannot be greater than 5 because the cycle lasts 5 seconds. Therefore, t must be in the domain of 0 to 5 seconds, as this is the duration of time where one cycle lasts for inhaling and exhaling of 5 seconds. Moving on to b, if asked how many seconds have passed if the volume of air in a person's lungs is 0 0.25 liters, would you answer this question algebraically or using graphic technology? I would personally use graphing technology to answer this question because the numbers got very, very specific as it would be very easy to miscalculate a single decimal. When I was graphing the function on Desmos, 
I noticed that for the x and y axis, they needed to be zoomed in 10 times the amount they already were to get the exact value of the polynomial. For the time at t to get the volume at v of 0.25 liters. To the left, there's a step-by-step -step process to get the full solution to question c. Finding the time at t to where the volume in a person's lungs is 0.25 liters. Take a second to read them over. When analyzing this, remember to take your restrictions into consideration, as the time must be greater than zero, but less than five seconds. Also, we need to note that we need to know the quadratic formula in order to complete the final step of factoring to solve and isolate the value of t at 0.25 liters. The quadratic formula is given in simple terms on the right. Once the synthetic division equation is done, you will get a new equation with three variables. The three variables are a, b, and c. They will be plugged into the quadratic equation to finally solve for t. Here is a visual of me completing the question of the steps that was given before from start to finish. So as you can see first here, I am just writing out my current equation of 0.027t to the 3 minus 0.27 to the 2 plus 0.675t. Now, I know 0.25 is the volume I have, so I will be subbing that variable into the v at t. Once that value has been subbed in, my goal is to move the 0.25 over to set the whole equation equal to 0. The reason behind this is because in order to factor, all variables must be put to one side. From question B, I took a factor of 0.45 as being the first time at volume 0.25 for my graph on Desmos. That means that this variable is a factor. And in order to use the synthetic division, we needed factors of the equation for it to work. Now, using the grade 12 concept of synthetic division, I'm going to use 0.45 as my factor and plug it in to the following numbers. Now, I'm going to be bringing down my 0.027 and showing the added sign to remember that I will be adding my numbers. The 0.027 will be multiplied by 0.45. Once that's done, I'm going to get a new number and put it to the top of the second row. Now I'm going to add the two numbers. Once I get my new number, I'm going to repeat the steps all over again. Multiply by 0.45, bring to the top, and add the two numbers together. Finally, multiplying my final values, I'm left with 0.25 as there is no remainder left. And now I'm able to have a new equation of 0.027t squared minus 0.25785t plus 0.5589675. That is my new equation. Now, all that's left to do is sub my new variables into the quadratic formula to fully factor my new equation to find the value of t at 0.25 liters. Notice I am just subbing in my variables of a, b, and c shown from before in the same order in order to isolate for t. From this step on, I will just be simplifying the full equation. Please note that there's going to be two answers in this final step because there is a plus or minus in the equation. Remember to pay close attention to your restrictions because it is possible to get a number 
that is within your restrictions. So you cannot use that number. That will be the wrong answer. Here now I am just splitting up my two um, possible answers, my plus and my minus answer. As I fully simplify these final steps, I will get my two possible answers to the value at t of 0 0.25 liters. The final calculation for the first one ended up being 6.233. That is incorrect because it is out of my domain and a restriction of the equation. Secondly, I get 3.315. That is the correct answer and on the exhale of when a person breathes at 0 0.25 liters. Finally, now that I've completed the question, what type of career would use polynomial equations? Well, computer and information system managers do. They plan and direct computer labs in large and small companies and for the government. They hire computer programmers and support specialists. They manage and review the work in a business and help determine salaries. They also decide what workers and equipment are needed to do certain jobs.